Well, I've come here to my favourite river, Hodder, in Lancashire, for an evening sea trout fishing. And the technique that one will use for sea trout fishing through the evening uh, depends largely on the river. Here I've only got one rod with a floating line on it, and that's enough for everything I'm going to do. But if I was on the spay, then I would be fishing a sinking line right through the night. Big river, fast river, sinking line. In this case, a slower river, a shallow river, a floating line. Now, again, through the evening, we're going to change fly as we go on, as things develop. So I'm going to fish the small fly in the fast riffly water until it goes dark, and then I'll change to big flies, a big medicine, silver fly, or a big sea trout stoat's tail, a black fly, and fish those then through the night. The most important thing is that when it really has gone dark, and here in this valley, which is overhung by hills and, and forest, uh, it goes pitch dark here. As soon as it's like that, on will go the surface lure, because that will provide so much entertainment and hopefully one or two fish. That really is exciting fishing. And that's how I go about a night on here. So here we go. We'll start off with this little riffle here and see if there is sea trout sitting in it. I won't need the net and I won't need the wading staff until it's gone dark and we're fishing the deeper water. Slowly down. Slowly down to that position there. So we've got a little bit of space at the rear of the shank that we can tie things in on. Now, the rule is that you should tie materials in in reverse order. And the first thing I'm going to be winding, the ribbing, because that is the thing we're going to wind. So if we take the rib, and this is very, very, very fine oval gold tinsel, we can tie that in with two turns to the rear, one, two, on top of the hook shank. So every turn goes backwards, tying materials in. The second material we need is a dyed claret cock cape. Now this is half a Chinese cape. I kept my white Chinese capes and cut them in two, uh, which I've dyed a light claret. And so I'm going to take one feather, and I want a feather with fibre uh, length, which is a fraction longer, about one and a half times the gape diameter. So once you've worked out what hook you're using, what I would suggest you do, if you're going to tie half a dozen, is to collect half a dozen feathers for hackles uh, before you start actually tying any flies. So that's the fibre length there, which is about one and a half times the gape. Now, what I'm going to do is to prepare this hackle. Um, this is a method which um, several of the old ties always used to do. It's one I always do. This is the inside, the concave surface of the feather. And what I'm going to do is just pull that, those fibres back, like so. And then I'm just going to fold those fibres around. This is known as doubling the hackle. And it's a, something I always do because it means that when I'm tying in the hackle, winding the hackle, because this is a palmer hackle wound down the body, it means that the fibres are all stick up, like so. And I can wind the, the stalk of the, of the feather against the hook shank. So what I'm going to do is take that by the tip, and I'm going to tie that in by the tip. Again, one turn back and another turn backwards. So we've got two more turns backwards towards the end of the hook tying in that hackle. And red tinsel can be an absolute nuisance to get hold of. This is Christmas decoration, and one of the great uses of old Christmas decorations. Uh, you can use, um, people have used biscuit wrappers, and things like this, but any red tinsel, flat red tinsel. And I've got a piece of flat red tinsel, and that is going to be the body material. So what I'm going to do before I tie in the tinsel is to wind the thread forward to the front of the hook and cut off any waste at the front. Take the tinsel and tie that in where we started tying the thread around the hook shank like so. And then what I'm going to do is to wind this down the hook shank in touching turns. making sure you don't drop any fibres in. Now, when you come to look at the salmon fishing, 
program, you will see that I varnish, and we can wind this back in touching turns, tinsel bodies. With this one, I don't. The reason is that I would have to wait such a long time for the varnish to dry, and there's always danger of the hackle picking up varnish and becoming sticky. So I don't do. This is the one exception to that rule. Cut off any waste. And now we take the hackle pliers and wind the hackle. Wherever possible, I follow the turns of tinsel until I get to the front. And there, I make more turns forward, like so, and then make two turns forward in front of the thread. And then I can bring the thread through to tie off that palmered hackle. Cut away the waste. So we can see a palmet hackle with extra turns in front. We're now going to rib that palmer hackle. And whatever you do, don't go slowly through that, the hackle. If you go slowly, you'll trap things. So just go as quickly as you can. You're bound to trap some of the fibres in. Go quickly through. And this ribbing will, in fact, support... the body material prevent that from fraying. So take that through very as quickly as you can and tie it off. And then pull back the feathers, fibres at the front, to make a base for the wing. The wing is bronze mallard. And what I do is just take one feather don't try to do slips with this material. And if you want to see more information on tying feather wings, if you look at the lake flies uh, program, then we deal with them all. That is the gape diameter there. And if I go one, two, three, four, and make a slip in there, that is four widths of wing. I now will pull that back that. That is four wing widths. And then cut off that web of feather. Now I put that on my knee. The knee is the perfect place to do this process. And you fold that once, like so. And you fold that a second time on itself, like so. And there you have a bronze mallard wing. So there we have a bronze mallard wing, which is a slip of feather, folded and refolded. Measure for length, about as long as the end of the hook bend. Pick it up and go one pinch and loop, two pinch and loops, and then tie it in tightly at the front. There's the wing, lift up the waist at the front. Tie that in, creating your head at the same time. Bring that back. One, two, Three, four, five, six, whip finish, finish off, and varnish the head, give the head two coats of clear varnish. And there you have a dark mackerel. I have a couple of friends who fish only that fly for sea trout on the river Hodder and catch a lot of fish. It's becoming very, very, very popular.